Hello heroes, it's Warwick here from Account Manager Tips, continuing my quest to help busy account managers get results. Now today I'm super excited to share my conversation with Callan Murasan, existing business manager at NetGuru. Callan joined the team when there were only two account managers and today, only two years later, there are now 20. Now if there is one thing that I know it's when you're a small business, your priority is survival. So organizational design and formal systems, well, you know, that can wait. Which means as an account manager, you've really got to rely on your instincts and, you know, maybe a little prayer. But uh, you know, what happens when things take off? I mean, you can't run an account management team like that, let alone you know, a business. <laughs> so if you are going to scale sooner or later, you have to think about how you recruit and retain talent. And you've got to put those systems in place for information planning and control to deliver a consistent experience for your clients. So in this two part discussion, Callan reveals in detail how he led the account management transformation at NetGuru to meet the challenges and also seize the opportunities that came with such enormous growth. So look, buckle up and join Callan and me for part one as we chat about how the account management journey at NetGuru began and what he learned along the way. Thank you so much for joining me, Callum, and really excited to welcome you to Account Management in Action and our interview series. We're going to be talking about, you know, account management in all its glory and uh, different perspectives. So I'm really excited to welcome you and to hear what you have to say. So why don't we get started just a little bit about, you know, who you are and how you got into account management? Where did you get started? Awesome. Thanks. First, thank you very much for making time. Uh, I'm actually really happy to, to have this discussion. Uh, how I ended up in account management? Well, um, so, uh, yeah, my name is Karina. I'm from Romania. I used to live in UK and I used to work in project management in UK. That, that was my dream. After university, I went up planning to work in commercial project management in industry, in heavy industry. And I ended up exactly doing that. But switching to Poland, moving for personal reason to, to this country, meant I can't continue my career. I didn't speak the language. Uh, and I ended up in sales. I ended up in sales because I speak Romanian and it was my first role here was to actually be an account manager for... SMBs, which are buying Intel products, so CPUs, but I was doing the account management remotely from Romania. And that was my first kind of touch with account management five years ago. And from then, I never left sales and never left account management. Um, went through a few roles of full cycle sales. So I did everything, outreach, inbound, cold calling, everything, all call, you call it customer success. And then I ended up at NetGuru, where I'm for two and a half years now, where I came for pure we called it customer success back then, but it's actually yeah. account management. So we, we changed the name uh, meantime. Uh, so here I ended up being pure account management. Um, the reason is the way sales department is split here. It's actually split in two very big parts, new business and existing business. So account management deals purely with clients which are already won as clients of NetGuru. So, so for the last two years that I've been doing, um, and I've been fortunate enough to to be in a high growth company. So I had the chance to actually grow the account management department and practice in this company. Uh, so when I joined, I was the third account manager. Today, actually, we are 20 people uh, in my department. So yeah, uh, officially um, from last week. So that's, so that's, that's where we are, yeah. That's literally incredible. And I'm really looking forward to sort of exploring that journey of yours from going to three to sort of 20 and what that's looked like and the challenges. Uh, so why have you settled on this sort of account management space? What's, you know, you've, you've been across so many areas of those, mm -hmm. of, the, of the new business, the existing business, uh, the, the operational side, sales. What, what's, the, what's the best thing about account management or why are you sticking with it? As a, so, as a so the thing that really attracted me, it's, it's um, I, lo I love sales. Uh, it's, it's one of the things I never thought I would say when I was uh, <laughs> in university or, or in high school and so on. I would always say, because I imagine sales is like the door to door man, like the guy who comes yeah. and pushes, pushes, your, pushes himself in, uh, selling you the product that you don't want. Um, but why I like the account management part of sales is, is the length of the relationship. There's virtually there's no end. Uh, with, uh, with new business sales, there is always kind of an end. You close the deal, at some point you pass the account over to an account manager. Yeah. The way, especially the way I do it now and the way I build this department is virtually the account is yours forever. As long as you keep the account and the client alive and you grow it, yeah. the potential of you to work with an account uh, can be over years if you're staying for years in an organization. And for me, this yeah. is very attractive. It's, it's something about my personal side is like, I really like building relationships. So this is the part, the relationship part. Of yeah. course, sales, sales comes out of it. I'm not going to deny that. Yeah. There is the big satisfaction of doing sales, but it's a bigger yeah. satisfaction to actually see the result of your sale. And when you're an account manager, you a lot of times have to be there and be accountable for what you sold as well. Yeah. Because otherwise, you might not be able to do a repeat sale. So 
Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's the reason this part specifically for me. Okay. I feel the same way. I think sales for sales and account management are sort of, of the two sides of the same coin. Both are about solving problems. Uh, and for me, you know, when you win the business, that's when the sales relationship ends and that's when the account management relationship starts. Yes. But ultimately, you're both serving the same purpose, which is to help your clients succeed and help them use your solutions to, to contribute to that. What it looked like when you first had just three people, you know, what, what, what world did you enter into as you started? So I, I entered into, uh, into a super fast growing company. So, mm. so NetGuru, I mean, it's not just my team who grew up significantly, NetGuru overall as an organization. So, so, so what we are, just to clarify, we're um, software consultancy. So basically we help organizations around the world, regardless of the industry, to go through digital transformation. We do design, we do development for their applications and consultancy as well. So the room to work with any industry is here. Um, and then um, the origin of the company is 12 years ago. It started pretty much as an outsourcing, but pivoted towards consulting because uh, it's, it's a much more value adding thing and it gives room to grow. So when I entered the organization two and a half years ago, NetGuru was already on this uh, trajectory in which it was doubling the business year on year already for two years in a row. That means the employees were growing, the revenue was growing, you know, amazing times the last few years. I can't yeah. say anything until probably a month ago when COVID hit us with reality. Amazing, amazing growth. And uh, so I entered this organization in a moment where we were acquiring a lot of new clients, a lot. I mean, our new business is, is an effective machine and it's been an effective machine before account management even existed here, I would say. Uh, but we were acquiring this like, amazing brands and amazing names that probably a lot of other companies would wish to work with. And then was working one or two projects and then things were flattening out. And the only way that business was growing back then, I mean, the, the main part how the business was growing back then was from new business, right. which works till one level, of course. Um, yeah. So when I entered the organization, I entered at the good moment, I entered just as an account manager, uh, as a customer success representative, but I entered exactly at the time when we started having more and more enterprise companies as clients, more and more bigger organizations. We were moving mm -hmm. from smaller startups to, well, um, you know, well-founded startups, organizations with hundreds of people, uh, tens of stakeholders, not one or two, organizations in which talking with the CEO is not as easy anymore or not even possible in theory yeah. to reach to that person. So I ended up at this, um, joining the NetGuru at this point. Uh, and then through circumstances of advance, I, I, I moved into a team leader position even five months later. And then from them, I started building the way I, of course, the way the organization allowed me because it fits into the vision, but in the way I saw fit account management. And by that, I mean achieving a proactive, proactive uh, attitude uh, because it was very organic. When we were a very small team, it was impossible to be proactive. Yeah. So the client was coming back. It was happy clients were saying, I want more. It's easy to sell when the client just says, I want more. But I wanted us to also explore, to navigate the organizations, to talk account plans, to, yeah. uh, to talk account by selling, to think all the multi-touches that we can bring things that were pretty much impossible two years ago because we were three people. One of the first things I did as a team leader was <laughs> my first goal was double the team. That's what our, uh, yeah, resources. our, our uh, exactly like our, our COO back then was the CEO. Now he said, uh, so Colleen, you're a team leader. So now you've, there was five people already by that time. Uh, so please, by end of the quarter it was quarter three, 2018, uh, you need to have uh, 10. So that was the target. So your team leader of a new team, which is not even a full working function, but also double the team. Because obviously we can't achieve all these things unless we have the people. So that was the first big challenge, was, was recruiting um, in a highly competitive market. I mean, the, the market at the moment, probably in the last month it changed, but it was driven by, not by the companies, by the employees. Right. Uh, so in a very high, high competitive market, in a market in which there are not many organizations like us, so it's hard to find people which have experience already doing that. Yeah. Uh, and also we are a very young company, so we do also mistakes and the culture is different and so on. Mm. So there's also there's also a level of blocker. You can't go to after very experienced account managers. Well, first of all, they wouldn't come and most probably yeah. want to report to a 29, 20 years old, <laughs> eight old Kalin. Uh, at mm. the same time, they would come with an industry experience that we were actually wouldn't would utilize fully actually. Yeah. So that, that will also not be good. Uh, so yeah, that was the big first challenge. And then slowly from there, we manage. So the result is we managed to double the team in a quarter. I, I, I've been lucky enough to work with some of the best um, recruiter uh, that I had. And, and we did interviews day in, day out pretty much and direct searching and yeah. 
Um, Got a good team. I was actually I was actually <laughs> looking for hunters, so that was my strategy back then. I was mm. I was not looking for account managers. I was looking for hunters. Yeah. And and the reason for that was I wanted to bring this proactive, the hunger in the team. Yeah. Uh, so so to, my my target in the first uh, round of recruitment was going for hunters. Yeah. And trying to bring hunters which want to do account management into the team. Yeah. What about um. Because I've been through that very same experience where you're the smaller player uh, trying to recruit experienced talent from larger organizations or more established companies. It just doesn't happen. People, people aren't going to leave their secure jobs at a well-known business in that sector to come mm. work for you. That's you, it just, it's, you just can't get those people. It's just very, very challenging. So you have to have a bit more of a, a wider view on your skill sets and where you'll take people from. Was that a challenge for you or were you like all in, I'm happy to consider other industries? What, what was your thoughts around you know, the, the recruitment pool and where you pick people from? Mm. So I was, not, I was not actually going for companies from the same industry. So yeah. I was not going off after, software house, after other software houses in general. And I still don't do that. I mean, yeah. now it's also a matter of, I know a lot of them and there is this industry, you know, the industry is small and I don't yeah. like um, poaching people directly. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, the thing that NetGuru was trying and I was trying to build here was unique. So I knew that if I go after another software houses, I won't necessarily receive the type of people I'm looking for yeah. because they were doing account management in the same way we were doing back then. Yeah. Uh, so what I did, I went for um, industries that are transferable, you know, yeah. transferable knowledge. I mean, account management, I, and I keep saying that sales is the same. Mm. Uh, it doesn't require, really, really matter if you sell a tractor or if you sell, I don't know, a super complicated solution. To some extent, the logic and the mindset is yeah. the same. So if the mindset is there, this yeah. is what I was looking for, is the mindset. And then I tried to look for very uh, similar, but uh, not the same industry. So I was looking for advertising media. This is because I, I really like how account management is done in this industry. It's very personal, very proactive. Um, so I was looking at, at digital agencies in general. Um, I looked at corporations a little bit, but the way they do account management, it's, it was not for sure, not even closer in maturity in our case. So it was not attractive for them. So that was the idea, looking for industries which are also not IT. And this is attractive. At the end of the day, we're an IT industry. So it's attractive. People want to move towards this industry. Yeah. Uh, and I'm lucky enough that NetGood actually has a very strong employer brand. So mm -hmm. um, this is something I didn't know personally because I'm a foreigner in Poland. But Polish people and especially the young people in this industry were one of the most sought IT employees in Poland. Right. So this puts us in a very that good helps. position. Like we always on top with like Facebook, Google and Tesla in Poland. So like we fight with them for, for the spot. So this helped, of course. Um, I think what was attractive for people, I mean, it would be good to ask them as well. It's, it's, I was always telling very openly, there is not, there's a bit of wild west. We're still building account management. So it's your yeah. opportunity besides developing as an account manager, actually developing, how do you want to do account management? Uh, yeah. So this was very attractive, I think, back then for people, because it's now two yeah. years almost, so. To have that voice and bringing those different people from diff different industries, different backgrounds, brings more ideas and more perspectives. Has that changed as you've grown the team now? So, you know, your recruitment strategy, have you had to evolve that as your business has grown and as your team's developed? How do you kind of go about you know, if you got a head count tomorrow, what, what do you look for now? What's so it, different? for sure it changed. Uh, I mean, we became better at doing recruitment. Uh, for yeah. sure. We learned a lot of lessons. Some of them the hard way. We recruited the wrong people, uh, mm -hmm. which is a failure. Both I always say recruiting the wrong people is a failure on both sides. So uh, it made me reconsider some of the mistakes we did. But it's, yeah. And it's painful on both sides because usually ends up with parting ways. And, it, and it's not a pleasant, uh, pleasant yeah. experience for anyone. Uh, but what we changed it now we started looking more for um, experience proven experience already so while yeah. when we were building the team we needed hungry people you know hungry and creative mm. people and 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 that meant a lot of time we recruited very young people which might have been in their first account management experience at netguru now we went started going for more senior people and by that i mean people who have few years of experience in account management again not the same industry but maybe uh, they've been account managers to industries that we would like to work with. So this is something that we're starting to look at. Um, but in general, the thing that stayed common, we're still looking for very um, self-starter self type of people because this is still a very big thing in that Guru's culture. Even if we're 700 people, it's, um, it's one of those important things. That you're, you're still a chance to build your way. And because yeah. I still believe we're building the account management the way I still want creative people. I want people who don't, 
uh, just accept the way we do things today and they always kind of challenge also the organization how we should do account managers so this is something that i always try to look for people that um, maybe they reach the level in their, their current careers or current places where they, they they are blocked their creativity is not uh, um, yeah. accepted or or mm -hmm. their way of doing things differently it's it's um, yeah it's put down instead of actually encouraged I love the idea about you wanting to bring people in that are excited to have their voice heard and make a contribution to the direction of account management at NetGuru. Um, how do you how do you make that happen? Like, what are some of the things that you do? Whenever I introduce a, a new initiative, and I introduced a lot of new initiatives over the last mm -hmm. two years, and yes, I did a lot of mistakes, and I, I learned my lessons the, the bad yeah. way, and I still learn them today. I'm I'm yeah. I'm, I'm just at the start of this journey. Um, I always consult them with the team and a lot of times I change my mind based on their feedback on, on the way we tried things. And one other thing, whenever I introduce new things, I always tell them, even if it's frustrating and it's a change, if it doesn't work, we'll just cancel it. So I think this is also sometimes a big fear. Uh, we ha we, it happened that we introduced a new process or a new, I don't know, way to try to encourage AMs to do some specific behaviors. I got the pushback. I said, okay, let's try. We tried. I saw it doesn't work. I came three weeks later. I said, cool, we cancel it. Sorry yeah. for the pain. Thanks for the feedback. We'll yeah. take the good parts and apply it in a new process. So we try to continuously iterate and I try to encourage the team. And um, I think we have a really good, this open culture. And you can speak up. You won't be punished for saying, hey, this doesn't work. Or you, know, yeah. or, or you also won't be punished for trying new things. This is very important for me. Like um, someone when I joined at Guru said, there's no failure. There's only lesson learned. And that's yeah. true, you know. Um, if people fail two, three times on the same thing, then of course it's a failure. Yeah. But if they fail and they le learn the lesson and they actually share the lesson also with the organization, for me, this is very valuable. So I try to encourage them, especially when they are new. I tell them the same I've been told when I joined, just go, go for it, make mistakes, break things, um, and just go for it and see what it happens. You know, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. <laughs> the truth is you lose a sale and okay, that's life. You know, and obviously you're growing the business and there's more demands coming through. And where, where were the things that you saw were immediate gaps that needed closing? Or where were the things that you spent your time embedding and, and working out? We didn't have standards how we do things. So the yeah. accommodations that we already had here were amazing. But they were great because they were great. And we've been lucky to have great people. We recruited the next five, again, really great people. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have the same standard. We didn't have a net good way, let's say, of doing account management. So while... That's not, not something bad. Of course, I, do, I don't believe everything should be you know, exactly the same. There should be a level of standard because that brings a level of quality or continuity. Mm -hmm. And it actually makes it easier for NetGuru to work with our department because our department naturally falls between others, between finance, between project management, delivery. And then if your experience as another department in NetGuru, every time you work with an account manager varies significantly in style of work, in reports that you're using and so on. So this was a big challenge. Okay, like the, the first big challenge is like, okay, now we actually have to start standardizing stuff. You know, it, it's about now we have to start creating processes. So we have the yeah. hands on board. We can do the work as we were 10. We kept recruiting. That's the reason we're 20 today. But that was the moment we started, okay, like we start need to start like defining processes. We need to define split between um, account managers and project managers because it was a lot of gray areas still. Who does what? Mm. And we started having conflicts and those teams were growing at the same time, you know, so there was like, um, so that was probably the first, the first big challenge once the team started growing, it's to set a standard. And one of the hardest one to do it was to, at the same time, I was introducing account planning mindset. So uh, the idea of sitting down and actually planning your account and not only think one quarter, this was something yeah. we were doing. We were thinking one quarter at the time. And that took, to be honest, it took two years. So I started it when I became team leader. And I, I believe I've just passed the crossing the chasm when I think it became normal this quarter. Yeah. It just passed. Wow. I still don't think the journey ended, but I think it took two years to get to the mindset where everyone finds it natural. It was easy to give people pr promote, no promotions, but opportunity to promote when it's two, three people. But when suddenly it's 10, you have different ambitions, different motivations, different. Yeah. So, th so then the questions came, hey, where is the career path? Where was the things I need to do to become a senior or, or yeah. and so on. So, um, so it became, you know, it became all, all bureaucratic, but not in a bad way. In a way, yeah. I think the, the good part of bureaucracy, we had to start creating, so. I mean, have you had to kind of look at new roles we didn't create yet new roles, um, not fully. So what we right. did, I mean, uh, now we have three team leaders. So the, the department is organized. They have three different teams. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the scope of the team is exactly the same. It's just the difference that how much a team leader can do. 
and the team leaders report to me and I report to the head of sales. Uh, but by doing this, we, we actually created a little bit of a new role. So uh, in the past, when I was a team leader, I was also an account manager. So I was doing um, account managing on my accounts and half of my time or more, I was actually building the team and doing the team yeah. leading part, growing yeah. development goals, career discussions and so on. What we did now for actually this is an experiment we're running still, um, but I believe it's a direction maturity. The team leaders are not doing accounts anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, we switched their role into a portfolio manager. Yeah. And uh, this is something we're still fully defining. I, I don't want to say it's, it's defined because I'm working on it pretty much last last few weeks. Uh, but basically what this person does, he still works on those accounts in their portfolio, which are key accounts or the strategic accounts, but they are a pair with the account manager. So now you have suddenly four hands, you know, uh, working on yeah. an account, more opportunities to open doors at different levels. There is a different le level of expectations I have from each, uh, each, each role, but this is kind of the only new role that we created. So we gave the opportunity mm -hmm. of people to play a more strategic account management so this all all of the three team leaders were senior account managers otherwise mm -hmm. you couldn't be a good portfolio manager because it's someone who has the big picture someone who's accountable for the account plan someone who's going to be a quarterly business review someone who's going to open doors with the more senior people in the organization so this is the only thing that we created new and i think it's good for people to know that if they are in your situation building a team they don't have to think on day one what their team needs to look like in two years you know you can be a bit organic about it and um Think about. I mean, and this goes you know, back to what I told you at the start. Mm. There is also room for them. And I've seen in other teams at Nadgur, and actually myself, the result mm. I'm leading this is actually me pitching for this. And this is something yeah. very big about Nadgur. Like you can still build your role. So if one of them, yeah. and I, if they hear me now, they will probably use it against me. <laughs> if one of them sees a room for a new role being created, a new speciality, a new, I don't know, practice leader, however it's called, there's always not good as always, me, myself, and myself also, but not yeah. good as an organization listens to these things. It's still small enough of an organization to allow these things being created. And this is very critical. And that's why I told them when I recruit them, I tell them there is still room for you to build your role. Um, so yeah, the career paths are there, but yeah. there is still room for more. It's I think that's something that people should consider a lot more is that job crafting element where you can reshape your role, put a business plan forward or a business case rather forward, share that with your leaders and you may find instead of having to quit or go to a different department, you may be able to continue to grow within your role by, you know, pitching a different version of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think people do that enough. And that's great that you've got a culture where that's encouraged. And I think, and, um, and as a leader, it's one of the most, I mean, it's, it's one of the most easy things to do. If someone comes and puts a good plan in front of you, yeah, you just, you just took the, the idea. It's exactly taking all the hard work yeah. out of it for you. Ex exactly, and yeah. and it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to enable those things. It's such a high satisfaction to allow someone build something they believe in, yeah. and at the same time, if it's aligned with the vision and what you're trying to build, it's just made your life easier. And that's the yeah. truth. And uh, it's just beautiful. Absolutely. Uh, so, so, and yeah. to your earlier point, you can always just try it for a few months, and then if it turns out it didn't work, they go back to their old role or whatever. So there's no no real risk. And so talking about the account planning, you told me it's taken two years to kind of where you feel like it's finally kind of embedded and that people are on, you know, on board with it and it's sort of part of the DNA. How, why did it take so long? Or what's, what was some of the, of the obstacles you encountered in terms of implementing account planning as a requirement? Mm, so well, when I mean it took, I mean, we started seeing effects after a few quarters, but what I mean, mm. it took two years to actually become such a natural thing. So like two years ago, um, we started yeah, now people don't think twice about it. They know it's a thing yeah. you have. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now they're excited. They're excited yeah. to do account plans. Two yeah. years ago, they were running. You know, everyone yeah. was hiding when it was coming about. It just account sounds plan. like extra work. But we we started we started initially with the end. By that I mean, um, we started with a presentation internally when you do the account plan, but we didn't start building the logic, the mindset. How do you plan actually? How do you think a year ahead? How do you don't think one quarter? And also our KPIs were aligned for quarters uh, back then. So yeah. what we did, it was pretty much. Uh, because I was an account manager myself still as a team leader, I managed to experiment. I had few accounts in which I experimented things. And as I was experimenting them, I was trying to use that as an example to others say, look, this is what I mean by account planning. This is what I did in my account. This is the result. This is why I would like us to think this way about our accounts. Mm -hmm. And of course I didn't achieve all the success, but I achieved some really nice successes. And, and you know how it is one of that oh, overnight success. And I was showing actually, no, this was a nine month planned deal, you know? Yeah. Um, 
so the, re the reason it was very challenging was first of our KPIs were quarterly focused. So mm -hmm. making people think more than a quarter was cool. They accepted it, but the KPIs kick you in. Yeah. Like the yeah. KPIs and the targets and the, the sales targets are per quarter. So you'll always choose the most immediate goal, yeah. even if it, it's a smaller deal over the bigger deal that you have to work for six months. Uh, so that was one thing that we changed. Actually, from this year, we are back aware on yearly targets. So this is something that changed because it gives people opportunity to actually work longer, think longer. It forces them actually and just give them opportunity because the targets are ambitious. Um, the other thing was to show to the rest of the organization. Actually, account planning also came in parallel with explaining to NetGuru what's the value of an account manager because yeah. us going to account plan, uh, we have this event every quarter called the account plan days. And... Um, Basically what happens, and at the start they were very small, very few people attended, was an account manager comes and they have 30 minutes for their account, the 10-15 minutes presentation, very fast. What happened in the last quarter? What are my goals? What I achieved? Where I'm blocked? And so on. And then 15-20 minutes of questions from the audience. We keep it open for anyone in Adguru. Like we literally say, if you want to come, come. If you're a developer, whatever. Oh, what happened? Okay. First few editions, uh, we had mainly people from um, business development. We had a few mm -hmm. people from uh, from management. I mean, we were lucky enough. I was lucky enough to be, again, the value of this was so. So I got sponsors at the C level, which were present. So the the CEO, our CSO, is always present there. Uh, the growth started coming. Then project management started coming, and now it ended up that uh, in one session, on average, is 30, 40 people. Wow! Uh, and it's interesting because suddenly, like you know, what happens now? It's First, like we also changed the way we set our goals. They're more ambitious and we introduced actually objective and key results. So we put one objective and few key results on an account per year. And we try to not make those about the sale opportunity itself. We try to make those about the soft things, like, you know, developing relationship at sea level in a measurable way. Yeah, like the experience um, as well. Getting, I don't know, maybe exposure together or navigating the organization, adding I don't know, X contacts and having yeah. so many discussions. So it's not about the sales. You don't get the sales number in account plan. Yeah. Um, but what happened is like these days, the events are, first of all, they're having very nice attendance. It became, it took a year of quad account plan days. that It became such a normal event. So like last quarter, it happened just a week or two after COVID hit. So it was even nicer because it was all, we are all remote. So now we all go for account plan day. Yeah. So it, it, it became nice, but it became an event that now it's acknowledged. At the end of the quarter, towards the end, uh, you know, there's two days, um, you know, with 20 sessions, that's how many accounts we, we pass to this half an hour per account. So it makes it manageable for the account manager. Half an hour per account is not a lot. Yeah. It makes it hard just for those few people that want to stay through all of them. Yeah. Uh, but what happened is because you have all these departments after that, people come and say, hey, you know, you said about this challenge, you know, you can fix it in this way. And then ideas now start being crowd crowded from the organization to yeah. the account manager and this is something super valuable and this is what i was dreaming when i started it the other thing is the account manager starts feeling empowered to actually go to the ceo himself and say i need you to open the door for me here in this way yeah uh, so they started thinking as their accounts as their own business you know and yeah. this is also something essential for me um, but yeah why it took two years because this takes slow you know like yeah. creating the habits to prepare for that to make it quality presentations yeah and by that i mean the targets being uh, good and i remember in december when we did it especially then that was probably the turning point was uh account managers came with their targets for 2020 like you know objective and key results mm -hmm. and they started getting questioned why are you not more ambitious you know why can you not do this well i'm blocked here well i'll help you you know there yeah. were see people saying i'll help you so don't worry Tell, just let's put this as a key result and that that gave confidence to people again i still feel there's still a lot of room to go in the yeah. future yeah but the way it became a custom and a habit this for me it was the kind of yeah the confirmation yeah. that now it's now it's something that's expected c level will ask me if, what happens if it's not happening no it's yeah. not going to happen they're yeah. going to come hey where is it well you've um, got to start somewhere and it doesn't have to be you don't want to overcomplicate it because then it becomes such a burden and, and, and no, but nobody wants to do it. But I love the way that you've blended sort of uh, quotas and targets with sort of more activity, soft skill based mm -hmm. things that are going to strengthen the quality of the relationship with the client, things that are going to improve the experience with the client, things that are going to develop the account manager that are part of your account planning as well. And I love that idea of those sort of account days. I mean, there's so many great benefits from that. Like you say, you, you kind of are now bringing visibility to the value that your team are bringing to the wider business. People from all different departments can now kind of feel like a stakeholder, a bit closer to the client, you know, because I think sometimes our product, our marketing, our 
you know, we're in account management, we're, the, we're often the face of it. And I think what you're doing with these days helps them get some insight to that. Yeah, those crowdfunding ideas and probably great experience for the account managers to be presenting, you know, developing their presentation skills and question and A, you know, thinking on their feet when they get questions and handling, you know, uh, conversations like that. So that's really, yeah. I mean, really exciting. don't get me wrong, it's stressful for them, you know, I'm sure like, yeah, but I mean, I mean, when you have the CEO every time and, you know, the head of marketing and the head of sales and you have all these eyes on you, but at the same time, well, you mentioned something about overcomplicated, and this is something that initially we did wrong more than two yeah. years ago. We overcomplicated. An account management presentation used to be one hour. Yeah. So first account plan day was 15 minutes. I told them you have two slides, nothing else. Yeah. yeah. And today is three slides. That's the limitation. You're not allowed to have more than three slides. Uh, so you need to keep it short because yeah. I always tell them the account plan day is about the Q&A. 10 minutes is just to give an intro, fast update where you are. That's all. Yeah. The rest um, is the, is the time. And that, that made it less of a burden for mm. the people to present. And then we have one more element of it. We measure account plans. And so I, meant, I mentioned about the objective and key results, but we have a few other KPIs that are actually the AM KPIs. And we came up with an account plan index, we call it, which mm -hmm. is a combination of this objective, key results, some other KPIs that we measure on accounts and revenue. And actually all this comes to a score and it gives you, you know, 70%, 80%. Yeah. And it gives you also a numerical indication where you are. Um, so that, that's something that it still works, but it, it works. It, some people, they like it, they like data. So they like to have a data point, you know, a yeah. number. So, yeah. I mean, the more you can uh, quantify KPIs, the better, because then you don't have those arguments when it comes time to pay the people at the end of the year, if you yes. can uh, measure things more objectively, but, um, all right, well, that's, I, I'm sort of blown away by that. That kind of, I mean, I think. So often as account managers, we're, we're so client focused. We tend to just work with our clients. We, we forget the internal thing, the, our internal partners and our internal networks and getting access to leadership. Uh, it can be difficult for account managers, you know, because there's layers between you, them and the C level within your own company. So you've, you, they've now got a platform where they can interact and engage and, you know, there's visibility, line aside of what they do, that they can, you know, develop relationships independently with your leadership teams as well. You know, they're connected. So, so many great things from something. So what seems simple, you know what I mean? But so powerful in terms of what you get out of it. Wasn't that a fantastic conversation? I mean, so much insight and actionable advice on how to scale an account management team and fast. I hope you enjoyed it. And listen, don't forget to check out part two, where we continue to talk about account management as a revenue growth engine for NetGuru, why your client sales teams are your best teachers, recommended resources for account managers, and a whole lot more. Details are below, or just visit amtip.co slash Callum2. Now, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to be uh, my next guest on account management in action, get in touch. Send an email to warwick at accountmanager.tips or DM me on the social media platform of your choice at Warwick A. Brown. Uh, I think that's it. So yeah, thanks for watching and until next time, bye heroes.